G'day guys, welcome back to the channel, and welcome back for another episode of Space Survival. So, last week, I, yeah, couldn't really figure out what I wanted to do in this episode. So, I have kind of figured out what I want to do, so, um, but there are a few little changes that I made. So, first of all, I just recolored a few things on this little ship here, because, uh, yeah, it was looking a little bit bland, so I added some kind of battered armor textures around the place so yeah I think it looks a little bit better with the door being that color rather than everything just being army camo um, the other thing I did as well is I added all of um, well I added four of these solar panels so that's increased my energy just a little bit not heaps but yeah just a little bit the other thing I noticed as well is the gravity generator is using like 560 kilowatts worth of power so even though it's not actually generating a gravity field at the moment because we're on a planet yeah it's still using all that power so ended up turning that off as well I didn't actually realize those things used power or unless that is no I think it's only set to like 0 0.86 so yeah, it's not even like the residual gravity either, so... Oh well. Alright, no worries. So, what I'm going to do is take this ship out, because what I've done is I've fully charged this thing. Well, not fully, but probably like 75%, 80%. Um, not exactly sure, but mostly charged it. I'm going to take this out again, try and find some more platinum, because if I have a look at production and then we go to say a large block and I look for an ion thruster for example yeah so here we go if we have a look at the large um, warfare ion thruster it's like 128 platinum ingots just for one so if I ever want to build a bigger ship in the future I'm gonna need a lot of platinum even the small ones need like 10 and I think I probably spent I don't know, a couple of hours refining just like 44 ingots, I think it was. Yeah, oh, 55 ingots. Yeah, so I think I do want to grab some more platinum while I'm here. So I seem to remember in the last episode I mentioned something about the fact that it was really hard to find platinum under the ground. And yeah turns out that the ore detector was only set to like 560 meter range so I really had no chance in finding whoa all right so I have found platinum <laughs> what you're kidding me Hang on. All right, let me try and get over this platinum deposit but if I'm looking at it right now it says one point three seven kilometers that is a long way underground well it turns out that this deposit is only about 552 meters underground well I say about that's actually pretty exact but yeah you kind of get the idea all right let's just turn everything off um, yeah, I should probably turn everything back on so I can actually open the door. You know what? I will actually go through the trouble and turn off all the thrusters. Yeah, I've kind of memorized all the buttons anyway, so it's no real big deal. Okay, so, um, yeah, unfortunately it's going to be the same thing as usual where I'm going to have to do this by hand. Uh, and this is getting really old really fast so a lot of people actually have mentioned this and I've been thinking about it too I really need to get myself a decent um, either a large grid mining ship or a small grid mining ship that will fit easily onto that thing because I need something that I, I can use to drill down to these deposits rather than sitting here and doing it by hand because it is honestly just a pain so yeah anyway uh let's do it by hand once more okay well i finally managed to drill all the way down and i grabbed myself a little bit of platinum um i'm not sure how much i'm going to get out of this mine but i think i'm just going to grab everything that i possibly can so 
Actually, you know what, with this uh, elite hand drill, it didn't actually take too long to drill this hole, so yeah, that was a pretty good bonus. Alright, so I think I'm finally done hand mining. I actually got, um, yeah, just heaps and heaps of platinum, so um, yeah, that deposit down there is just absolutely massive, so let's just have a look at what, what I got. Yeah. 42,000, 53,000, and 21,000, so yeah, I think that should be enough for now. Now the question is, is this ship actually going to be able to lift off the ground? Now, um, a couple of people in the comments of the last video mentioned that I probably should have just moved the other ship to this one, rather than trying to get this one to the bigger ship, so yeah. <laughs> I gotta admit, that didn't even cross my mind, so anyway, let's see if we can actually do it this time, so turn on all of our thrusters, oh, that's pretty cool, so it looks like we have the power to do it, now where is, oh here we go, my ship is over there. Alright, here we go, so we're getting pretty close, now all we need to do is just park it up, and then from there, I think I'm just going to head back to my base, um, the asteroid base, I'm going to get maybe a little bit of iron, hopefully I have enough cobalt, but like I said, I want to kind of recharge the batteries on this thing as well, um, I didn't say that actually, but... And then, as I mentioned at the start of the episode, I would like to get some sort of a dedicated planetary miner. Um, well, in fact, I really need two. So I need one that's like ion based. And then I also need one that's at atmospheric based. Oh man, these thrusters, like, see? <laughs> this is what I'm talking about. Alright, finally we have touched down. Yeah, I think it doesn't help that this thing weighed so much, and I think that was partly the reason why it was struggling to, yeah, kind of counteract the side-to-side -side movement and the fact that it's got, like, one single ion thruster. Alright, so I'm just going to head back into the ship and we shall make our journey back to the asteroid base. Alright, well I think I'm ready to go. Finally got to use the lights because we're doing a bit of a night takeoff here. I'm not really too concerned about taking off at night. It's more like landing at night that really bothers me. So, alright, let's uh, unlock the landing gear and get out of here. Goodbye Mars. Well, that was a little bit nerve-wracking, so <laughs> I came up right in between all of these asteroids here, so yeah, that was not cool. Uh, I dare say this top thrust is going to take a while to slow me down, so yeah, my Mars entry point is actually all the way over there, so I kind of missed the mark a little bit. I did actually go forward a little bit to get to a little bit flatter ground after I made that GPS marker so I am tempted to make another one but it's going to take me so long to slow down here. Alright so I've created my secondary Mars entry point GPS marker. Now I did have to go through some asteroids to kind of get here. I actually got pretty close to them so yeah. Uh, I've also gone ahead and renamed the asteroid base to the asteroid base because I never created a GPS marker for the base itself. There was just two ore deposits that I created a GPS marker for, so I just changed one of those to be the asteroid base. Alright, so let's go ahead. Well, actually no, I have set the jump drive to that. So let's increase its range to maximum and jump towards the asteroid base. Well, I suppose it makes sense to turn the ship around at least. So, where are we? Need to head in that direction, roughly. Yeah, that's kind of close enough. They're so close together that I can't really tell. Alright, so... Can't be used in a natural... What? You're kidding me. Alright, let's go higher then. 
Alright, let's try this again. Drives can't be used in a natural gravity well. I am nowhere near the planet. What are you talking about, game? Why are you doing this to me? Alright, well, looks like we're gonna have to go even further upwards. Right, so I'm 22 kilometers away from the entry point, so I should be so far out of the atmosphere now, it's not even funny. Let's try and jump now. Uh, I'm, I'm confused. Oh, of course, because the GPS marker itself is in a natural gravity well. So that's what the problem is. It doesn't matter that I can't actually jump that far, it just matters that where I'm jumping to is in a gravity well. Right, okay. I didn't know that, but now I know that now. So, well, I guess with that in mind, let's just kind of change the uh, jump drive to jump to nowhere and we'll just do a blind jump. We should be able to get it pretty close. Okay, so I'm just sitting in my seat here and I'm just going to aim directly towards the middle of that square and that should hopefully get us close enough to where we need to be. Alright, let's jump from here. Yeah, 1378Ks, not too bad. But obviously not as much as before because we weigh a lot more now. Alright, and then we're still, by the looks of it, 484 kilometers off so I'm just going to power towards that until the jump drive recharges and then do my second jump and it looks like I've encountered another drone facility yeah that's okay I'm going 250 meters per second so I'm not really too worried about it I think I am actually in range for this thing to spawn drones at me but now I'm not really too worried about it, so I'll just leave it. Alright, let's um, continue. So, I'm not sure how long this jump drive has left. Let's just double check. Yeah, three minutes, so... Still got three minutes worth of time to burn, so I'll see you guys when it's charged. shouldn't take us too long to get back there. Well, here we are back at base, but unfortunately for me, it is really, really dark, so I can't really see anything. So I'm going to try and go around this asteroid, but I need to be very, very careful. should do it and then I should be able to park it up pretty easily oh, I need to level it out level out just a little bit there we go and then let's move to the left and then yeah the rest is gonna be pretty hard because it is so dark Alright, that wasn't too bad. It was, yeah, reasonably hard, but it wasn't terribly difficult. Alright, let's uh, lock it down. Awesome. Alright, so we are now locked down to the base. I'm going to turn off all my thrusters because I don't need them to be on. I think I am missing a thruster from the group though, so I'm going to go ahead and fix that while I'm here. Well, it looks like all the thrusters are actually a part of a group, so I'm not sure what is going on there. Uh, okay, how are we going for power in the base now? 
So yeah, we're not really doing that well for base power. Yeah, that kind of sucks. And my ship's power kind of sucks as well. You know what? Um, one thing I think I really, really need to do is go ahead and build some more solar panels. Now, a lot of people have been saying that you can kind of double stack them. Where's my solar tower here? Yeah, so people are saying that you can put like another row of solar panels behind this and they will also gather solar power as well. So I think I would like to try that out. Because um, if that's the case, then I can like kind of double my power. I'd really like to get my hands on some uranium. But the thing is, I would need to charge my batteries for so long that I think it's going to be worth it to do the solar tower anyway. And I don't need, yeah, really intensive stuff um, to kind of build those solar panels either. So, all right, let's, um, let's get started with building some components for them. Okay, so I've got the components being made for these solar panels, but while I was doing that, I was thinking about these refineries, and these two here on the base have the speed modules in them, and they use about 1.68 megawatts, and if I'm not mistaken, at the moment, they're doing platinum, so considering how long that actually takes, I think what I'm going to do is turn these ones off, and then turn on the ones on the ship, because the ones on the ship have power efficiency modules and use like 224 kilowatts each. And given our power scenario, I think that kind of makes sense and I'm in no rush to refine that stuff anyway. So yeah, let's go ahead and do that and then get the solar panels done. Okay, so it turns out I ran out of nickel, so what I went ahead and done was um, just take the respawn pot out and mine a whole bunch of stone again. Um, because I really can't be bothered going to an asteroid to get myself a whole bunch of nickel. You know what though? Nah, I really want to charge these batteries and I really want to get these solar panels done. So hopefully now we should be able to finish everything that is in production. So... Nah, I think I went ahead and I turned those assemblers off. Alright, so let's turn these back on. Yeah, I didn't really want that stuff to be built over there, but it seems like it is anyway, so... Okay, now I've got to get the refineries to actually refine the stone first. And we're good to go. Okay, so I was about to build these solar panels, and I did try to place one here. So if I grab one of these blocks, for example, and then we just grab a solar panel, place it right there, and then weld it up. Yeah, you can see it's yellow, so it doesn't actually get the sunlight, even though these solar panels shouldn't have sunlight where they are right now anyway. We'll just totally ignore that fact. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, so when people said to put it, like, you can stack them, yeah, they obviously didn't mean that way. I think what they meant was this way, so... Yeah, I terribly misunderstood what people meant by that. Would have been cool if you could double stack them the way that I did just then. Yeah, there you go. See, that one works now. So, yeah, I'm just going to do that. I think maybe to make it look a little bit more interesting is I might stagger it a little bit more. So, maybe in the center too, I might put three and then put like two out to about here. Yeah, just like mix it up a little bit. Alright, well I've got my solar panels kind of laid out, so in the center here I've decided to go for like three panels deep and then two blocks over from that I ended up going, yeah, basically just two uh, solar panels deep and then just stopping two uh, from the edge. So yeah, hopefully it will give it a bit of in... Uh, a bit of an interesting shape. Words are hard today. Um, but yeah, we'll see how we go. It is dark, so it's really hard to see it, and it is going to be Energy massive. Critical. So yeah, there is that too. But hey, at least hopefully I will see it. But I think one thing I really need to do is put some lights all the way around the edge of it, because yeah, it's kind of a bit of a hazard at the moment. All right, and we are done. Wow, look at this monstrosity of a solar tower. 
Yeah, now that's what I'm talking about. I actually... I don't mind the shape, although it would be nicer if I could thin that out maybe a little bit. But I... I think these things are two blocks wide, or are they one block? Yeah, they're two blocks wide. Uh, so I don't know what I could do there, but yeah, overall I'm pretty happy with it. So now let's see how long the batteries are going to last or how long it's going to take for them to charge. Actually, in fact, what I, what I ended up doing was totally doubling what I had before. So each side had like nine solar panels all the way across there. So I essentially just put another nine here as well. So yeah, I've essentially doubled what we have had before so be interesting to see how many megawatts that entire tower produces well if my math is right and i don't see any reason why it wouldn't be this thing is pumping out a healthy 11.3 megawatts which is pretty good for solar power um of course the only downside to that is that i only get that amount of power for half the day and then the rest of the day i'm reliant on batteries but the problem is, even with all that power, if I go ahead and have a look at my batteries, um, it's still going to take like four or five hours to charge most of them. So, yeah, see, the current input, because that 11.3 megawatts is distributed across like 20 batteries, I'm not really getting that much per battery. So, yeah, still going to take a while to get all of these charged. So... I'm really not sure what I want to do in the meantime. Actually, yeah, that's right. I wanted to build some sort of a small grid miner or maybe even a large grid miner because, yeah, I am really getting tired of taking this thing down to planets. Um, actually, no. Before I do anything, what I do want to do is take this over to my nickel asteroid and go and get some nickel because this lack of nickel is really starting to annoy me. Well, it looks like I've got two asteroids to choose from, and of course, I am most definitely going... Wow, that is um, really close to where I park my ship. I may even put a dock for this thing somewhere else, because that's, um, yeah, an uncool amount of closeness. <laughs> if you can, yeah, if that is even a saying, or something like that. Alright, so let's head off to this asteroid here. Well, it appears as if I have awoken an SPRT salvage station. I have no idea what that is, but it doesn't sound good. I have a feeling that's one of these drone spamming facilities. Well, I guess at least this time I actually have some magnesium on me. So... Yeah, the only problem is this ship, obviously, is uh, totally unarmed, so yeah, that's not good. Alright, and we're here. So I actually managed to find a deposit, like, that seems to be right on the surface. Yeah, it is. Look at that. That's awesome. So I've got to be kind of quick smart about this because, like I said before, I have a feeling that we've got some drones coming our way. So let's try and do this as quickly as possible. Well, there wasn't nearly as much nickel as I had of hoped in this deposit here. Oh wait, there is still some more. <laughs> oh, maybe I spoke too soon, but even still, there's not really that much in this deposit, so... I don't know if it's going to be able to fill the ship or not. Or maybe it is with this last little bit, but I might have to manually throw out some stone. We'll see how we go. Okay, so I think I've managed to collect somewhere in the realm of about 80,000 nickel, maybe a little bit more, maybe 90,000. Um, I could have got some more, but yeah, trying to get this pod into tight spaces like that is just too hard. So I think it was probably a couple of hundred meters underground, or maybe just, you know, a couple of tens of meters underground, but even still. This thing just can't really go that far underground. So, yeah, I just, hopefully that'll be enough for what I want to achieve going forward, but we'll see, because nickel seems to be the Achilles heel. And I always say, oh, yeah, that should be enough. 
but it never is. Well, it looks like a SPRT drone facility has now spawned, so yeah, that's also not cool. Uh, right next to the salvage station, how far away from the base are we? 20 kilometers. I might actually be far enough out of range of that guy um, to be out of trouble, but I guess we'll just have to wait and see. And hopefully the guns that I have built and the decoys and everything like that, if that is going to spawn drones at me, is in the location it needs to be. Well, I kind of totally forgot that I actually had, uh, yeah, uh, cargo hold full of ore and almost smashed into that little piece of asteroid there. Luckily, I missed it by, I would probably say, the length of this thing here. But yeah, it was um, pretty close. I wish I had got that on camera, actually. It would have been um, pretty cool to see. <laughs> well, pretty funny in a replay. It wasn't funny at the time, but stop, please stop please. Yeah, man. Ion thrusters, they are so weak. Alright, let me get this thing landed. Alright, and there we go. So, I believe that we have everything that we need to get this thing built. I don't think we really need to go too crazy. Um, yeah, we've got nickel, just everything that we need. So, uh, the question is, what do I build? <coughs> okay, so I've gone ahead and pre-built a whole bunch of stuff so that we can get started with this, um, yeah, small grid build. Um, I'm just going to use some blueprints that I've used in my other series, which is, so, I'm going to need an ion miner and then also an atmospheric one. So the two that I've got should be pretty good. So I know the atmospheric one can stand like vertically and drill a hole straight down. So yeah, that would definitely come in handy. So yeah, we're definitely going to build that one. All right. Now, what I need to do is just put down a rotor. So... Just chuck one here. Actually, no. First, I'm going to put down some conveyor junctions here. Yep, just like that. And then I'll put a piston down. Actually, I can just put it on the floor. Let's grind this down. Alright, there we go. Now, just put a piston in front of that. I don't think it needs to be one block above, does it? Yeah, I think it might might do. Alright, there we go. The only problem is it is quite close to these refineries. So I might move it over one more block. Well, looks like I was right. That, um, Energy low. yeah, that SPRT drone facility is now spamming drones at us. Ooh, all right, now things are kind of getting a little bit spicy. So, I've set up this piston here arrangement. Um, so I need to put some welders on here as well. Um, and then from there, I can then print some mining ships. Now, I do have two blueprints that I've used before, so I'm just going to use those for now. Later on, what I would really like to do is have some sort of a, I don't know, hydrogen-based setup that has, you know, so many tanks on it and, you know, a couple of large cargo containers and can just, you know, eat its way through planets. But um, for now, I think a small grid miner is in order. Alright, so I've gone to the trouble of making all of this stuff in preparation to build these mining ships. Um, but while I was off camera, I decided to kind of test them out. So I know my atmospheric mining ship is really good. Like, it can lift whatever you need it to. Um, it can go vertical. It's perfectly fine. 
but the ion mining ship I only ever really designed that to be in zero G so you know space so I never really put a lot of bottom thrusters on it or anything like that to keep it in the air so I decided to test it out on the moon and of course it doesn't really work too well and the other problem with both of them is that they're kind of set up to sit horizontally because in the vanilla style gameplay um, a lot of the ore deposits are really big stretched out horizontal veins and so yeah the ships were kind of designed with that in mind so that means that if I want to go like 500 meters down into an ore deposit I'm going to have to drill two holes to then lift the ship out horizontally which is not really ideal and the hole is so tight that you can't even see what you're doing when you're trying to get out of it anyway so yeah I honestly don't think building them is a good idea so dare I say I think I'm gonna have to build something completely different and completely new so I don't know maybe I might go for something that's really big and large grid or maybe I'll do something that's like kind of small grid something that's large grid with um, jump drives would be really nice but don't know if I really want to commit to that just yet because I don't really have that much gold so maybe I'll do and it's gonna be a vertical style miner because these ore deposits are so deep that it needs to kind of be able to go straight down and straight up and you know just not waste any time trying to you know dig two holes to come out horizontally you know just go straight down and up so yeah anyway while I think about what I'm gonna build for that I would like to replace this here survival kit with a med bay cool there we go so now I don't have to wait ages to recharge myself I can do it in mere seconds nice and it's all plumbed up so I can get oxygen and everything from there as well so yeah it's looking yeah it looks terrible <laughs> it really does this base is shocking um, right so what do I want to build um, I could go large grid because this thing isn't really that big um, and it doesn't really consume that much fuel. I'm gonna make it hydrogen based because yeah, it just makes sense It would be a lot less thrusters. I reckon to do it that way All right, well, I've decided to build this thing all the way down here just in case we have some unexpected visitors So hopefully it's a little bit safer down here, but we'll see how we go um, so far all I've done is just put down two of these here yeah large hydrogen tanks but small grid I've decided to go small grid because yeah at least then I can use this ship to take it to where it needs to go because this has the jump drive and yeah I suppose what I could do is grind down the jump drive on this thing but yeah like I said I'm not really sure if I want to go for a fully fledged large grid miner just yet Alright, so we have a large cargo port there, so I might try and put in a large cargo container. So, do these have a large port? Yes, they do. So let's put in one of these, except we need the components for it. Alright, large cargo container. Is there actually a different type of large cargo container, or is it just the vanilla one? No, it's just the vanilla one. Alright, so probably go for it in that direction I reckon yep one there and then I'll do another one here so I think it maybe it makes sense to have the Energy cargo low. at the back or sorry the um oh, it's off center <laughs> I think it makes sense to have the fuel at the back where it's less likely to get blown up well that's rather interesting it seems like the um cargo container only has large ports on three sides so if I want the cargo ports to line up that way it's gonna have to go in that orientation that is just bizarre okay so I think what I'll do is I'll place one that way and then I'll place one 
in the opposite direction, so then because I'm probably going to put thrusters where these cargo containers are uh, like for example on the sides where there's that small port I'm probably going to put a small hydrogen thruster there so oh man seriously right finally now it's placed wow this thing is um, going to be quite big I don't even know how I'm going to dock it I might have to dock it like on Energy the side critical. there using merge blocks or something like that okay so there we go those things are welded up so now I can just go ahead and put in my thrusters here all the way along the side and that should be enough for like kind of side to side movement yeah that should be more than enough I think and just scatter them all the way around the outside and I'll put some armor around this thing to kind of dress it up a little bit <laughs> and then we could do something like this <laughs> put a big thruster on the side uh, nah I don't think I want it to be that big I honestly think these small thrusters will be plenty um, but I guess we'll see how we go now I do also want to put a cockpit on this thing but I don't know which way I want the cockpit to actually face like do I make it you know, face this way so that when I'm driving the ship, I, you know, I, I don't really know. Or do I put it, you know, kind of like this way? Yeah, that way there, like that. Do I put it that way so that when I'm flying it, I'm just going like straight down? I really don't know which way I want that to be. Okay, so I think it kind of makes sense to put, um connectors on the side of this thing so that I can kind of hook it up to the side of that um, so to that end I can see that the connectors are basically one block taller than these thrusters that I've gone ahead and welded up and I was toying around with putting some sort of blocks around them but yeah I don't really like the design too much and I think it's going to be hard to do something directly against these hydrogen tanks if I was to space out the thrusters by one block I reckon it would give me a, a lot more creative freedom yeah the thing might weigh a lot more because it's going to have a lot more decorative blocks on it um, but that's all right as long as it looks good all right and there we go so all of the conveyor tubes are now in I ended up going for armored ones because I'm just like well while I'm here I might as well just make it that way so now we can go ahead and try to dress this thing up and make it look pretty I don't know how successful I'm gonna be though okay so I think I've got a reasonable design worked out um, so I've got this little kind of uh, I, I guess you could say pod of blocks around the thruster here that then kind of connects over to this side here and if we have a look at it here it's kind of rounded off originally I did try and make it just straight blocks there but it looked really weird so I mean the profile is probably a bit bigger than what I had hoped for but yeah it should still work out pretty well one thing I would like to check though is how big these cargo containers actually are because I don't use the small grid large cargo containers very often so I would like to see how big they are so it looks like they're 15,600 liters each I'm pretty sure that's about a similar size to a small cargo container yeah it is so what I'm interested in knowing is okay let's find the base large cargo container move everything over to that and then pack this full of ores and see how much it can carry alright well it's practically empty so let's put this platinum in here so each trip we can get about 80,000 ore okay yeah so honestly I think two large cargo containers should be plenty now that means I need a lot of thrusters to actually get this thing to lift off the ground now one area I was actually thinking about placing some would be like maybe here for example so the only problem is that it would have to sit right where this armor slope is so it would kind of ruin the aesthetic and if I did put a thruster there 
So, and what I mean by put one there, I mean vertically, so... One minute, let me... Yeah, so kind of like that. I guess I could put some there. But I'm pretty sure they need three blocks worth of spacing. And if I follow the same design philosophy as this, then I'll have one block worth of spacing. Unless I change it up a bit, so... Yes, that is a rather difficult decision. Or unless I put some here, maybe? So we could even put one there. That way they're kind of integrated. So it works out a little bit nicer. But that leaves two blocks worth of spacing. Unless I put something there. Hmm. Alright, I'm going to... I might actually do that. I think I am going to do that. So, let's get rid of this. Oh, I didn't want to get rid of that block behind there, but okay. Alright. Fine. Um, let's get rid of... Is this still connected to all of this? Yes, it is. Let's get rid of this reinforced conveyor tube. Um, the thruster and I'm going to replace that with a reinforced T-junction no we're going to have to just go for a conveyor junction I think yeah so just a small conveyor like that now we'll go for reinforced tubes so I shall put one Oh man, I really hope that's still connected. Like so. And yeah, that actually looks half decent. And if we get rid of this and we put another thruster on that side, then that should hopefully work out quite well. Now, I think I might delete the block there and just, you know, kind of give it some more shape. Um, or like allow this to have three blocks worth of space to fire that thruster so if I've got two on each corner that's yeah eight in total now if I'm not mistaken these puppies here should be able to lift about I think it's like 40,000 kilos in the moon's gravity so yeah I think that should hopefully be enough if not I could probably do another row of, of those here and then that would work out fine. Like 16 thrusters going in, in that direction should be enough to lift all of this stuff. I mean, I hope so. The only question is how long is it going to last? So what I'll do is I'll complete this area and then this area as well and then we'll see how everything kind of ties together and how everything looks. Alright, and here we go. So that is kind of like the finished product. So you can see I've got my um, yeah, my thruster there. And I do have, I believe, so we've got one, two, three blocks worth of space. So yeah, it's not going to damage anything. Uh, all i got to do now is repeat that whole process a whole bunch of times and then this thing will be done. So I think I will end up having to put um, some there as well and go for the full 16 because I, I honestly think it's going to be really heavy because in order to get this kind of profile uh, through the ground I'm going to need a lot of drills so because the small grid drills really aren't that big are they so if we grab like a small grid drill here for example and I just place one there I'm going to need Probably oh, some guy on his motorbike. Can I place one there, please? So I'm going to need at least three o'clock across. Words are hard today. Uh, and then maybe, how many do I need in the other direction? Yeah, so a configuration of something like that type. Actually, that's not too many drills, is it? I thought... I would need more than that. I thought I'd need way more. Only five drills. 
Yeah, that's actually not too bad. So, okay. The only problem is I need to actually get those connected to the rest of the conveyor system, but I don't think that will be too hard. Uh, I believe there's a conveyor running from there, so that should be able to connect to this drill. We should be able to run a conveyor from the back of this one through here to that. And then that will then connect to this center drill here. Although I think what I'll do is I'll put like a plate in front of all of this stuff. And then I'll run a conveyor system, yeah, in front of that. So, alright, let's grind that down, that down, that down, that down, and that down. And start laying in some conveyors. Okay, so here's where I'm at so far with this thing. I think it's looking pretty good. I decided to run conveyor junctions from this point onwards down to these drills. Although instead, I think what I might do is maybe use one of these conveyor junctions here. Place that on the front and then run the drills from that. Or I believe there is a conveyor converter. Yeah, this thing here. So I might even just make use of this thing instead. I kind of forgot that those two things existed, especially the conveyor converter, but um, yeah. Also, I went ahead and I put in the second thruster up the top here, so yeah, I think overall it's looking pretty decent. Um, I think I'm going to change these blocks here though to beam blocks, so let's just do that quickly. Um, also, I did change the color mainly for like contrast purposes because this color is a little bit easier to see than the last color if that kind of makes sense and it I think it makes it easier for you guys to see it as well so all right there's our beam blocks done and as you can see it it actually looks quite decent so yeah I'm overall pretty happy with it I was thinking about also maybe running some blocks up this way um, I did try these light armor slopes because these won't interfere with the thrusters at all but energy critical I don't know if it is too much um, I suppose what we could do is maybe use some of these ones so these ones are a bit thinner so they'll probably work out a little bit a little bit better so we could do something like that too and I think that might dress it up just that tiny touch more um, I'm probably gonna go for this color scheme here and couple that with maybe some sort of orange very similar to this orange here maybe a little bit different well looks like I ran into something again and died <laughs> oh, seems to be a common theme goodbye buddy um, okay, so anyway guys, that's pretty much all I've got time for in this episode. I'm going to work on this a little bit in between episodes. I might, I don't think I'll do too much because I want to get most of it like kind of on camera. So um, yeah, I really hope you enjoyed the episode guys and I hope to see you in the next one. Alright guys, I'll see you next time.